There we go. On Hi, the minute. everyone. I guess we're live. So how's it going? Welcome back. It is time for more Trek Yards goodness with myself, Captain Foley. Myself, Kamal Cockings. Yay. And you guys, of course. Uh, I'm looking forward to your input on this one. Arguably the most important part of live is you guys. That's true, because without, you know, you guys, we would just be talking to ourselves, and we do that quite often, so yeah, we, we appreciate, you know, taking the heat off of, I, I don't want to actually have to talk to Samuel, so, you know, talking to you guys, it's a buffer. you know how it is. A sanity buffer. <laughs> you know, it's funny how we used to do podcasts, uh, film them, release them, and this is such a better method, because it lets us have a live discussion, it lets us say, oh, what was the episode, and then people can jump in and... and you know, it's a whole different format, format, and 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 it's amazing that we've, you know, somehow we make more mistakes, and, and we know it's going to be edited than live. I think we do pretty well in the live ones, and no, it's not going to be edited. Well, you, it can't be edited. Usually, our first read through of the scripts before we actually film are better than when we actually <laughs> film. It's like more naturalistic. We should actually like record the the read throughs yeah. and use those. But anyway, that's beside that's neither here nor there for live. Yeah, it's less presenting. I know I, I always get Technobabble, obviously, in the second time. Just infinitely better than the first time. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. something to be said if, if I'm doing a you know a read uh, a read through for the first time. Since it's more natural. That is my first read through, so it is actually completely natural. I'm reading for the first time. Very natural. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But they don't see they don't see the first read throughs, and you really should, guys. We should record one or two just to show you how we do it. Um, but yeah, anyway, we are back to talk today specifically about a Captain Pike TV show, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if that's really a good idea or yeah. uh, not. I mean, there's a lot of conflicting viewpoints on this, as we saw when he, we posted this on Facebook. A lot of people are like, yes, yes, yes. A lot of people are like, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a lot of compromises. If it's not, you know, connected to the JJ verse or Discovery verse, then fine. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people are saying there's a lot of years there with Pike that we don't know about that aren't really canon that can be filled in before Kirk gets command. Um, so there's a lot of differing viewpoints. It's going to be an interesting discussion for sure. And while you just our audience, I'll share. Have that interesting you discussion. Do. You do that. And as always, guys. Um, <clears throat> As you know, for these lives, super chats are important. They help the channel, as you know. But you already knew that. But I have to say it anyway because we might have we might have new viewers that don't know that. Right now, we have 33 people watching. Everybody hit like immediately. Let's get up to as high as we can. Likewise, once we get 50, uh, the moderators will have to pay. That's just the rule. Um, so. Yeah, uh, as I said, super chats are important. If you want to get your voice heard, your question answered, whatever, put it in the in the super chat. It comes up in a separate window for us, which is great because we kind of lose track of the conversation in the regular chat sometimes because we're talking. And um, you know, if if you want to donate via PayPal or something, that that option is also available. Again, everything is linked down in the description below of all the videos uh, as to ways to help us. If you do send to PayPal, make sure you tell the moderators in the chat. We will. Um, look at, we'll go to our email and check our, check the PayPal and read your question or comment from there as well. So that's also another way to do it. Um, yeah, 43 people now. Yep. Um, also, uh, great stuff from Teespring, our Teespring store. We got some great Trek Yards merchandise and some other cool stuff down there. Ways to save money on Eagle Moss and a bunch of other stuff. So just check out all the links uh, whenever you get a free minute. It uh, would be greatly appreciated. And if you really want to help us uh, on a more regular level you can do so via patreon become a patreon member uh any amount of money will help and it'll definitely um you know it's kind of the backbone of what we do monthly so uh, if you can subscribe to patreon please do even like two three dollars five dollars ten dollars a month yeah, even a dollar a month it all adds up and it all helps out and it's usually less than a price of coffee for a day um and it just makes a huge deal in our world so if you can do that please do so as well that link is also down below as usual um, so Samuel is sharing this around. It's another great way to help us out. Just share the link with anybody you think that'll enjoy it. Any groups, any Star Trek groups that you think might be interested in this topic. Um, even even sharing it now while the live is on so we get more viewers come in. That's a great way to help also. Um, but also sharing it after the fact. If you're watching this after the fact, sharing the video around is a great way to help out as well. Um, but yeah, if you can do it now while it's live, that's even better because we can get new. And uh, if you are a new person, make sure you're subscribed as well. So... There you go. That's, I'm done with my, my spiel because 
Samuel is back and looking quite intense. It's reading the chat. Oh, well, how dare you? And I'm here to talk to you, Stuart, the man, the myth, the legend. That's that's right. Yay. Mm -hmm. Purpose and Pill will join us tonight. Um, and then, guys, just to mention, I don't know if you mentioned our drunk live stream, ready, Stuart? Did you pimp that ride? I did that last night on my live last night, but not today. I mean, so, well, I can handle that if you do that you yesterday. Do uh, so yep. tomorrow, no, not tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. Saturday, tomorrow's Friday, Saturday. Yes. We're very excited to do our last of TNG Season 1 reflective, retrospective, breakdown, booze-filled, we hope, live stream. Our first birthday one was amazing. You guys really came out in force, both in views and super chats. It supported the channel mm -hmm. a billion percent, and we had a really fun time and a really fun video that just kept on giving until Stuart blacked out. Uh, and last time again, we had a really great sport of time, uh, a lot of fun, and you know how drunk we get is up to you guys in your super chats. But mm -hmm. the more we get, the more interesting it gets. And you can imagine talking about you know the end of the season after ten shots is quite entertaining. So we're excited about that. Um, to our favorite and least favorite moments, maybe your favorite guest star, all those bits and bobs, and just you know where the the rebirth of Trek happened. You know the movies were a thing; mm -hmm. people liked them. But they could have just stuck with three movies, four movies, five movies done. But TNG started the the next generation, hundred percent. Without the show, there wouldn't have been an empire. And so, looking back mm -hmm. at that, the first season that really got it all restarted uh, in our, I wouldn't say modern eighties is certainly not modern, but our modern era. <laughs> yeah. Well, sixty-eight people watching. Everybody, hit like. Let's get to fifty right away. That's very important. Um, and also make sure you subscribe. But we have two super chats that just rolled in, so we're going to get to those three super chats that just rolled in. So we're going to get yes. to those right now. Yes. Stephen W. Fathry puts Steven. in two dollars. Uh, we might get Pike Show news at New York Comic Con. That's right, New York Comic Con is not this weekend, but the following weekend. It's the oh, wow. same weekend as London Comic Con that I'm going to be at, mm. which we'll talk about separately. Um, but yes, um, that's a big venue for something like this. Uh, we might even get some sneak peeks of what's coming up for Discovery season three. Um, so who knows? We'll keep our eyes peeled for that uh, incoming news. So absolutely. I mean, maybe Vegas just happened to be a bad timing, bad timing, because we got absolutely, absolutely nothing at Vegas. It was the most disappointing Vegas you could possibly imagine in terms of that. <laughs> yeah. um, and the next one's a long way away. So, But I guess if you have the national stage of a, I guess, a big con, I mean, it's in New York. I have no idea how big it is. It's just it's in New York, therefore yeah. big. But um, there's cons in every there's a Comic Con in every cunt, every city, pretty much. So, um, yeah, yeah. I think they had something last year there. They announced something. So, yeah. Where's that destination? Destination England's only a, f a few weeks after that. Ooh, yes. Uh, but I wouldn't assume they'd announce anything there, even though it's a big Star Trek event. So we'll see. Hmm. hmm. Well, we'll see. I hope so because I'll be attending Birmingham this year. So we'll both be there in person. Oh, if you want what a to shame! I won't. Oh no! What a, what a coincidence! Some of the other card. Oh no. Like he's coming to Canada at the same time. It's just yeah. We can see each other in the air and hey. Well, high five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I'll be there. And so you'll be able to see Team Trek Yards at Birmingham if you're in the UK. So please come by and say hi. And others. Irish Trek is going. So we'll both get to meet him for the first time. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, we've met him. We've met him online. We just haven't met him in person. He's been on our show a couple times. You know so. what I meant. I know what you meant. Because I've, I've, been very fortunate to meet a lot of these YouTube personality people and, and fan film personality people. I'm really notching people off. Um, it's great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I have this fun collection of everyone I've met. Uh, more so than you, but I've been to a few varied other cons, obviously. Um, but it's yeah. really like, ha ha ha! It's great! Sorry, Subjects. Yes. Go, go, go. <laughs> Next is Joseph Petrick. Hello, Joseph. Hi, Joe! Doing? Two euros. Trek yards. Yes! Need uh, to hear more about the title of the Picard show or the Pike series. Although, side note, you know we had Star Trek Enterprise, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, and mm. TNG. But Star Trek Picard, I, I laughed. I thought that was a fake title. It's so silly. Do you really want actually Star Trek Pike? Because they got two <sighs> things about a person, which for me personally, I would feel uncomfortable about. It's just not a smart idea. Okay, it's easy brand marketing, but it's well, really the two modern shows that everyone cares about are named after people. It's like, really? Well, that'll be interesting to see if they do actually come up with a Pike series, what the title will be. I don't think it would be Star Trek Pike. It'll but, be, uh, I don't know. 
the Lost Years? I, I don't know. Enterprise Chronicles? It, yeah, they need to do something interesting like that. So, yeah, they'll be definitely challenging to come up with a good name. Well, especially sure. as I can imagine if... Okay, we'll skip right to the end. If they get a Pike show, if it's successful, if it lasts more season of Discovery, which I don't think will last four, let alone, you know, I don't think it'll last four. You can imagine if you know if you don't know it, Captain Pike or Star Trek Pike, then by season seven you can bring in a young Kirk and oh my god, now we're just doing TOS light. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, if they don't mm-hmm. know Pike, they have that ability. Well, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about in this live, guys. Yes. I got a few things that are on my mind about it but david bestig though hey. throws in ten dollars thank you very much david excited for tomorrow's drunk live that's actually saturday's drunk Sorry. live I got confused. saturday and it's going to be a one eastern standard time which is five in the uk so six sure yeah six, six. to eight yes one six. to three okay. nine to twelve yeah, it might be more than two hours, too, depending on how it goes, how generous you guys are. We can yes. keep going. Um, but yes, um, Jarzia, though, throws in $5 Canadian. It's not a bad idea, but not what we've asked for. Pike was a high was the high point of discovery, and we want to say it's a good idea because CBS won't offer us better. Uh, yeah. Mm. There will be issues with a Pike series regardless because it is set in this disco-verse. Um, mm which is kind of based on the Kelvin timeline a little bit. There's a lot of problems with that. Uh, the visual reimagining, just if they come out and say it's visually reimagined Star Trek, I'll be like, hey, absolutely, do your thing. You, you got a great enterprise. You got a good actor. Do it up. I mean, it'll be good. But don't tell me it's prime because that's going to just annoy the shit out of me because it's definitely clearly not prime, and even though they say it is. And Jarzy points out Pike was a high point of discovery, but that's because we had one shining star inside a pretty mediocre season with a bad plot mm, mm-hmm. you know it, it, you know if he if, if his character was in tng season four he'd be overshadowed by most of the tng cast mm-hmm. you know i mean just because he out i mean fair to say pike outacted everyone maybe except spock but yeah. he should have a yeah. good job and you know, pike was by far the best actor of that show and it really showed but i mean he's older more experienced and just did it better yeah, and it's good to see an actual Starfleet captain in the chair, mm. besides uh, Mirror Universe Lorca, even though I really liked Lorca. But... And Dan23, who's always here, I don't know how he always has the time, but always <laughs> here, and just a non subject question, he said, I found the Deep Space Nine Valiant review better than the entire Season 1 TNG reviews, just saying. Which I'm confused by as a comment, but okay, glad you like that one. That we're done exactly the same style. We're actually going to make it shorter a little bit, but we didn't. We went into the full thing, and well. thank you, though. Thanks. It's yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving along. Cedric yeah. Taylor zero eight puts in five dollars. Thank you. How's your fan movie with the five captains? Still delayed, uh, because flying people in, you need them to be available, and uh, everyone needs to be on the same schedule. I'm trying to do casting bits and bobs. It all got a bit complicated after a certain point, but I'm trying to make sure it gets finished in one go. We've got budget to fly everyone in once, and so if if any of the actors for that event say oh i can't go and all the things are non-refundable i mean we can't really do it again so i gotta make sure yeah. that when it's booked it's booked booked and the studio at the university is is went through a time of flux and so the longer i give it the more flesh out they're gonna be but uh, i want to film in early 2020 i was expecting to have it much more booked this month but then someone didn't get back to me for this doesn't go back to me which is kind of worrying i might give them a call um next week we'll see um but I mean, as I keep saying, the, the, unlike Temper Omni, where it was the digital stuff that took longer, most digital stuff is either done, mostly done, or almost done. So it's the other side. It took a long time to film, not a long time to edit, versus Temper Omni. Not, not that it took some time to film, it took quite a long time to film, really, and then a long time to edit. So I'll be quick when we get to that bit. But as long as we can film it at the start of 2020, it'll be out before the end of 2020, 100%. Thank mm. you for asking. Appreciate that. Yeah, Jason Link uh, is back. He was there. He was on my live last night. Thank you very much, Jason, mm. for two dollars super chat. Much appreciated. Star Trek: The Pike Years. I mean, that sounds all right. It's you know, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's better than Pike for sure. Star Trek: Pike. Star Trek: Head on a Pike. Uh, <clears throat> Gareth Fairclough though puts in five Hi, pounds. Uh, Star Trek: Pike. Uh, s- season, season seven. Season seven. That was my joke with, I made. 
Oh, with Kirk. <laughs> Easy. Pike and Kirk have a personality clash drama right there. Ah, absolutely. There's a lot of potential for that kind of thing. Um, but do we really want to see Kirk dragged into all this? I mean, they did a good enough job with Spock, so I guess, you know, if they do it right, and if it is like season seven, like you said, yeah, sure. Problem is they've got a... Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and Mr. Captain 93 says, doesn't that picture of Pike and Spock like Samuel and Foley? Well, who's who? I guess I'd be I, Pike because I'm older. Yeah. I'm going to darken my hair. You know, you, you, and point to me, ears. To me, we're more like O'Brien and Bashir. You know, I'm I'm Irish. I've got the that's that sense of humor. You know, like O'Brien, a little bit gruff, a little bit grumpy sometimes. You're a Bashir. You know, you're bright. You got you know, you're smart guy. Whole good life ahead of him. Taller, you're taller than me. You got a good head of hair. You know, and we got that that chemistry, that that friendship uh, back and forth. And I, I would think, fight with you at a fake Alamo. That would be cool. I, I want to do the Battle of Britain with you, actually, mm. flying Spitfires. That'd be awesome. But yeah, I'm, I can I I uh, compare us more to Bash, uh, Bashir and O'Brien for sure. But thank you for the the compliment. Um, yeah. All right. So <clears throat> thanks everyone for that great start. Yeah, it was a fantastic start. And keep it up, guys. If you have any questions <laughs> or comments, by all means, super chat. Um, so Stuart, yeah. ask you the question first, as you're the okay. captain. Is a Captain Pike TV show really a good idea? Question mark. Honestly, for CBS right now, yes. It's what everybody's been asking for. If, However, <laughs> they have a lot of potential to mess things up even more than they already have. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of canon information in those Pike years. However, as we saw with Enterprise, you got to be careful how you tread with that because there is canon information you know, that you can put together from the past to TOS that we don't want to get too we don't want to muddy the waters too much um and saying that the enterprise is canon and that it's prime and that it's going to be changed to what kirk eventually uses in the five-year mission is bullshit and that's the biggest problem they have if they come out and say it's a visual reboot and it's pike i think people will be even the people that are kind of put off by discovery might come on board but i think for cbs it's a smart move to do a pike series right now yes and kind of jump in there uh yes. it, it was very interesting we, you know we asked the question we were, some, we were the first people to make the to release renders of the Disco Prize before the uh, season two came out because the Star Trek Adversaries model. We're very proud to be the mm -hmm. world exclusive on that, and we kept asking, you know, how could you turn one to the other? We had the scale, and we were able to you know extract that all and, and say, well, how can you put one to the other? We were intrigued if they were just going to ignore it. Um, the the bridge, uh, you know, while a nice design is too big and there's multiple like flaws, it's clearly a different bridge. It's not trying to be the same bridge. In terms of mm. physically the same bridge, it can't be. It's just too big and too whatever. But in the book, the New Eagle Moss book, which obviously licensed, but canon is the is, is the word where it's not on screen, it's not canon, but it's licensed, it's official, and it's brand new, so they're taking the orders from the people, and right now, as we know, CBS is far more interested in being very hands-on and very like, tell this, only this, you know, this is status quo, for better or for worse. And that book explicitly has paragraphs, I'm very excited to read it, honestly, you know, this is the official Enterprise seventeen one book, looking at uh, the original, this one, and then the first refit, which is still the original Connie, and it it has you know actual information about how they turned the Connie into that, into this version, and it all makes sense as if it's all one big continuity, visual and all. And I'm very excited to take quotes on that, maybe look at some of those quotes, but we were which way they were going to take it, and they they've taken it as exactly as as literal that it does go from how it first was this and then back to the second version that's that's the official story uh -huh. um and so you know if you do like, like you say if you do get to like season seven they have to re re refit the bridge like the other one because either you take out tos and tng and ds9's episodes respectively or you don't include this as the official visual continuity which is much safer because guess what they've sold how many billions of pounds based on toys based on the bridge of the enterprise Billions? How many do you think of the fifty years? A lot. Um, a lot of billions. Like with, you know, if it's featured in a book <laughs> or in a game, or you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, we got another great super chat from David Bessig. Throws David. ten dollars. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I like the guy who played Spock. I think he gave it a good shot. My issue, though, the makeup. 
He's too white. Spock should have some greenish mm. tan to his skin like Spock did in TOS. I agree with that 100%. Um, you can't, don't really notice it a lot when you watch um, yeah. the unremastered TOS. When you watch the remastered, though, there's some really good close-ups of Spock. And, yeah, he's got that green tinge to his skin. It's very subtle, but it's, it's great because he does have that um, copper-based blood instead of iron. And... Yeah, it's hardly noticeable at all uh, unless you watch the remastered. But yeah, it's it's there, and I think Discovery was kind of missing missing a trick with that one. Well, that's uh, you know that they're, they're normally sort of twenty five thirty percent off the beat at any given time. So mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. then it wouldn't take much to make the show really good. Uh, but they just yeah. don't want to don't want to go that way. Yeah, one hundred and twelve people watching. Everybody hit like. Uh, let's get the like numbers up. Early on, uh, it's great to see this many people this early in this chat. So hopefully you guys enjoy what we're saying uh, because we're going to have some back and forth as to whether this is a good idea or not. And I would love to hear your input, whether you guys think that this is a good idea. Now, Samuel, you've asked me the question, Mm. so I'm asking you the question. Do you think that that CBS doing a Pike series right now would be a good idea? I'm going to sort of a different picture of Pike just as a a new visual. I'm trying to put a few visuals as if... It was a show. Ooh, visuals. Because we have some nice, fully. You have a PayPal too. So while you're talking, oh, I'll look up the PayPal. I, as I've said before, it's a bad show idea. It's a great miniseries or movie idea. Direct to TV, direct to whatever. Um, you know, t- t- Cage is almost TOS. TOS is almost, you know, Discovery in terms of era. And so doing a, a doing a show here just allows them to to scrumple on continuity every week um for the benefit of no one uh and yeah. they put themselves in another box now while yes maybe with kurtzman doing these other things they'll put on you know they'll hire somebody who actually wants to make a hybrid show rather than a discovery version of a tos show so they'll say right well let's you know because that's kurtzman wanted the the corridor let's just rip it out because refit and that would make it look better and you know do a few things and and, and they could easily make it look between the two, because you don't need to turn, you don't need to change it much to be more appropriate, where it's a visual update rather than a visual reboot, and there's the subtleties there. And so, if the, the, the person was in charge of that, could could do that, that would be good, um, and tell mm. stories that I guess are different, because you wouldn't want to be TOS again. I mean, Pike is actually very similar to Kirk, just mm. without the rougher edges, which is weird. He, he's so like nice vanilla, but that was a refreshing pace from how bad um, Starfleet terms Lorca was. And he also contrasts well off Burnham, who's very anti-authority. I'm also know it all. Like his strong morals and strong, I know what's right and wrong versus Burnham is is a good contrast. But him on a weekly basis is just sort of vanillary. So it'd be interesting if, like, say, a movie in the sense of he goes and does a situation. Here is a really cool story. Let's go deal with it. So a miniseries also works. You know, like the Farscape Peace of Wars, a three-hour miniseries, two hour and a half three hours, boom, something epic, something sort of, you know, TV but not, where you can have all the fun character beats but give them a journey. Um, you know, personally, I don't really care what happens to Pike in between. It's like mm-hmm. saying what happens to Scotty in between where no, where Cage and where no man, where was Chekhov in there? I mean, the, these aren't that important questions and Pike was never that interesting a character. He was a, once, he was a one-off that was made mm-hmm. better in the JJ films. And this is the best situation we've had of him so far in terms of what he actually added to the role. So it's not that interesting. But if you made it about the story, so maybe, you know, maybe that movie is why it gets refitted. You know, the the, the, the first big heroic act that made the Enterprise a legend, because at this point it's just one of the 12. Maybe it goes out and does an absolutely momentously cool thing, gets super damaged, and the final scene of the movie, it's refitted into a much more similar colour palette. Guess what? They can now sell more toys. And everyone wins, they get a fun you know, thing. There's a really, there's an mm. easy way to do it that would just make money, get great <clears> reviews, <throat> get great reaction, utilize the actors well, and there's a there's not good ways of doing it. And getting a seven season TOS clone, but Discovery TOS clone, which stomps on continuity for seven years, it doesn't that doesn't sound smart to me. Um, even if people are clamoring for it, it again, Pike in context is amazing, but mm. you know what do you think? Oh, I totally agree with you on most of those points. Um, <clears throat> I do think financially, though, it's a good move for CBS to listen to the fans and give them what they want, which, which everybody's is the short been for. Well, yeah, cut but the short track pictures. Yeah, 
yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, no. Anyway, before we move on with the discussion, we'll just get to this uh, PayPal from I'd... Mark Alfonso. Oh. He sent ten dollars. Oh US. wow, I like you. Thank you. He says, I want Anson Mount to play Pike in a holodeck simulation in the Cage era uniform on Star Trek Picard <laughs> for an officer seeking advice. That would be fine. I would love to see that. Um, will they... Uh, see, I'm concerned about Picard, though, uh, being in the Discovery universe uh, and having any kind of flashbacks because we're going to get the, the same shit uniforms that we got uh in discovery well, unfortunately but we've seen in the uh group shot that there is a new alternate discovery uniform discovery tos which doesn't have the broken collar has a different material like there are nicer looking versions of the discovery uniform uh and i'm, I'm sure as these uh, you know, again a show can fail from the top down you know uh, in terms of cr creatively maybe not the script or the or, or the actors but you know wrong decision at the start like the Klingon designs that's brian fuller's idea and it hurt everything going forward so obviously these mm -hmm. short tracks aren't being creatively led by the same team in the same way as the discovery season three because they're busy so who's who's writing producing directing short tracks at the same time as discovery well it's not the same exact team is it and so maybe they said well we want different uniforms Let, let's just not do these things that the discovery guys did and they're like oh damn these new discovery era tos looking uniforms are like wow there's a that really fixed it you know, so I'm really excited to see those short treks. It's like, what does the rest of the fleet have that looks better? As we finally move away from Discovery era uniforms, which are not great. Yeah. Well, uh, I do like the short trek idea. I mean, that might be a better way to go about it. Um, but I don't know. I there is a lot of potential for the series. Um, even even if they do kind of violate canon, I mean, people are going to be happy a lot of people will be happy regardless because uh, canon doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people unfortunately um <clears throat> it's else, just you know what's funny as we progress further down this ladder of and eh, we'll just change the canon less and less people will be invested because you can't keep it all together i know like you're separating out people into different camps to now you're not going to have the same love and, and, and need for the canon next time around. It'll get more and more dilute to the point where who the hell cares and it's just a show. It's just a show. Okay, whatever. You know, um, mm. there's a reason so many astronauts are astronauts because of Star Trek because there's a, you know, a lot of that clever stuff comes back and comes around. Mm. Uh, yeah. See, my biggest problem they need to say it's a visual reboot visual update something they need to stop with the it's prime especially with the enterprise uh as you talked about with the bridge it just doesn't there's no way it went from the cage to that then back to tos and that's the biggest issue that i have with it and that's gonna be the sticky point for a lot of people um of course they own it they say it's canon so we have to kind of abide by that unfortunately and that's just a set situation to be in because if you care anything about canon yeah there's been a lot of canon errors in all the series of star trek um small little things uh it is hard to maintain that much canon however it can be cleverly done um and the way they've done it in enterprise and a few other places where they've kind of messed up a little bit it's not very noticeable whatever it's a small little hiccup it's not throwing everything out the window like discovery has uh, so it's, it's, it's a tough situation. Uh, Canon is a dirty word to a lot of people and people like us that care about Canon, care about continuity, care about that kind of thing. We're looked at as, Oh, you guys are just nitpicking. You guys, uh, can't enjoy anything new. And that's not the case. That is absolutely not the case. Um, we've always maintained that you can redo TOS and make it look more cinematic and new. And they've always maintained that look, that uh, period piece look for TOS whenever they revisit it in all the other series. Um, Discovery has taken that huge departure from that. And just because the people in charge say it's canon doesn't make it so, unfortunately. So it'll be interesting to see well, how Picard plays out, whether Picard is using the Kelvin aesthetic and timeline. Um, we'll have to see. But that's the fun of what we can do, because we take them at their word. They say it's canon, therefore we can say, well, you just made the ship three times bigger, you say they're both canon, 
Therefore, we can actually say, well, picking according to a lot of oh, people. Oh, there we go. Sorry, OB OBS died and came back. Uh, oh. But you know, it's not nitpicking if it's what they're telling us. It's like you, 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 you create. I, I do wonder though, in ten to twelve to fifteen years, if they do adverts showing the Enterprise, are they going to show the Discovery Prize with Discovery Bridge, clever green screen? Are they actually going to show the Enterprise, the one that was fifty years old, start of the franchise, and then CBS, possibly a trillion pounds inflation or whatever? You know, it it seems. You know, uh, I can't see it's possibly overriding anything really. Um, more just a fad. It's like the JJ09 prize. That's getting forgotten year upon year. You know, that design, mm -hmm. that mentality just getting more and more forgotten as if it never happened. It made the money in the short term and it hasn't left any legacy. Whereas the Connie is always on the posters and, you know. Well, ironically, a lot of the time you see a, a new Connie on a poster, it's Gabe Corniers, which he, <laughs> And so, he's quite. Yeah unhappy about that because they never asked permission and all that but anyway <laughs> yeah they use that to advertise the show on netflix and stuff gabe corner's reimagined enterprise which is kind of funny um but yeah and we know canon's been violated many times we've talked about that and a, a little bit here and there is not that big of an issue um but just the way discovery did it is very much <sighs> Well, I don't know how to describe it. It's not... Well, the, the, the simple difference is, for Interim and Darkly, they spent days and days actively, meticulously building, improving, making it perfect. In Discovery, they spent dozens of days actively changing, making their own mark, because they wanted to do it better and do it different. But better, different, wrong. But, yeah. that's why I, I brought, brought this picture of the new Short Treks Discovery Enterprise Transporter Room. Now this, I, I really did harp on when we did our review last time. This, I think, is a really good use of their time, energy, and space. Because like we said, if you've got to build the sets months before, and there's a certain order of sets to build, then if the Brian Fuller direction of art design started in January, they're building in February, he gets fired in March, well, set one, two, three, and four all have been built to one standard. Things change. Maybe you can just repaint set six. So, you know, the Transformer looks so different and not great because of those reasons. Now, suddenly, you, you kind of wonder if they're the right team at the start. This Transporter Room, um, while I, d I hate just a cheap repaint and bright colours, it kind of, it's kind of obnoxious, ironically. I love the the lights. I love the morale, morale whatever you call it. What do you call it? Mor More. Thank Moray. you. Moye. Moye. Uh, the back of the t like th this is a much better version of the thing. Although the fact that the the uh, um, beaming tube things look like go too far down. That's just the angle. Like this is a much better. It's like take the elements that are there, and jazz them up a little bit. So mm -hmm. it, it, you know, what what's funny is that if you're doing a Pike show, if you make whole new sets which you've already established look like the Discovery sets. Then what? You're gonna are you gonna build two versions of the sets? One discovery version, which is almost identical to the Pike version, or are you just gonna redress the discovery version? In which case, discovery can't film on them for months at a time because of the show. Like, if you redress, you can't use both unless you film them alternately. But then a show takes six to eight months to film. So that's just like, you know, then you just what you you as soon as one finishes filming, you bring the other one to the same sets, and the team never stops filming. Then you now a year and a half out from filming, blah, 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 releasing, and then the, the interest will be gone two years that down. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're going to build them fresh, because it's a brand new show with a brand new budget, I can build them closer. And then what happened to these sets? I guess then that's the early version. I mean, that's that's the nice thing about doing a Pike show, is that they can reset the board again, because they need to build things fresh. They can make mm -hmm. closer versions of everything. The uniforms they can update to lose the collar, and, and maybe make the silver stripes the nice fabric ones, and that's all you need to change with those. Mm -hmm. um, redo the sets close to the bridge obviously just take out the back wall and that's it and a floor back wall and the floor that's it so that would be a nice excuse to have a refit and then, but then you have to do an e commerce magazine to say oh and then it's refitted again and then now the book's un sits suddenly obsolete already because they made a version in between <laughs> yeah um, Devo77X says continuity always been a problem in Trek I, I agree a little bit <clears throat> however Trials and Tribulations they re they redid the bridge for that they you know made it look correct in a mere darkly they made the defiant look exactly like it was supposed to they did the 
a holodeck recreation of the bridge. It was the TOS bridge. It wasn't like, oh, wow, well, we don't think that'll look good. What we're going to do is we're going to make it modernized. We're going to update it. No, no. They've been very faithful, and that's what I got to love about people like Doug Drexler and Michael and Denise Okuda. They're very true to the vision, and they, they do what they can. <clears throat> Jeff Jacobs puts in a dollar ninety nine. Even though not here, make Jeff pay again at one hundred. Well, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, if they really want to do an honest Pike show, they should get proper cage uniform, move the production to Kingsland, Georgia, and use the Star Trek continues sets. Uh, lots of problems with that, but I agree that would be a good simple fix, I guess. <laughs> uh, a lot of people would be upset about that, however. So you know. Well, the irony is, how many hundreds of thousands will you save when I'm to build new sets? So therefore, you could make a yeah. really cheap, like really cheap mini series on the correct sets. You just repaint them with, you know, expensive paint. That you know, you have those guys help you with the color, uh, gives some slight refurb because it needs a bit of refurb. I mean, they could make an entire, they can make a six episode mini series on those sets for basically just the cost to fly them. You you know what I mean, and the actor's salary. Mm -hmm. uh, if they really want to make like a, like, and that's the thing. If you want people on, on CBS All Access, imagine they pitched a genuine TOS, cage-ish. But imagine putting Pike in a TOS uniform. So obviously we're skipping Cage because now we're close to TOS, or even Wear No Man. Although I think we can again, wreck on the uniform slightly. I mean, whatever. Put him, just put him in TOS uniform, the exact same one, which I think would look great mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Do a mini series. It costs almost nothing, and you get a million new subscribers on All Access. Yes, it won't be watched by the mainstream, but guess what? We'll all buy the Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. We'll all, well, those that can watch on CBS All Access, and boom, you just made your money back, and you've just got fan crud, and it was cheap yeah. as hell, and you tell a good story, which might get you an Oscar. Who the hell yeah. knows? Tell a good story. Um, well, yeah. Well, good old gamer says they had to make the tribbles uh, when correct to match the footage. LOL. Yep. But the other ones they didn't have to. For in, in a mere darkly, they could have had the inside of the. The Defiant Bridge looked like anything. It didn't have to look like the TOS Bridge. They could have redesigned it to look modern. It looked the better. Fact, it looked the original. That, yeah, the fact is they didn't. They made it look original and just spiced it up a little bit cinematically and lighting-wise to make it look on par, if not better. Right. Smooth than, smidges. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's great. I, so, I, I really still want to also do the project where I, do a, I design a visual update of that bridge. I know I keep saying that, but it's, it's a bit of a commitment to do. Um, how do you do an actually faithful visual update on all the sets that takes the spirit of them, but makes them modern? You know? Yeah. Well, that's easy to do. We've talked about that. I would. I have ideas for that too. So, um, mm. I am not a nugget. Blackheart says the upcoming Short Treks episode with H. Benjamin has a cage-looking Discovery TOS uniform color. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. does. He does. However, the other people in the exact same short trek have the disco offset collar. Uh, we talked about that earlier. Where I'm going to grab probably... those pictures because they're pretty interesting. Yeah, because yeah. he's probably on a science vessel. It looks like everybody on the science vessel has that kind of uniform, mm -hmm. um, but not not the uh, not some of the other characters that have the the Discovery style ones. So, and an interesting side comment by Zach. And hi Zach, uh, why they need to transport them? When it's just easy to transport without one, that's a problem with visual continuity. If they sight to sight and it's easy and there's no repercussions, they mention it's dangerous, then why use transporter yeah. pads? Whereas in TOS, it was very limited and he felt yeah. like there was a functional reason for the technology. Whereas it, who the hell cares and who the hell cares? And they even made a point of saying that intraship beaming was very dangerous. That's why they didn't do it very often. Uh, you need the transporter pads to, to make it safe. So. But yeah, now it's just a thing that happens just all the time. So, I mean, it, it, it allows to tell more stories, but when you have a... St stories are made stronger by the limitations. Yeah. If, if characters can do everything, there's no challenge. If a ship can do everything, there's no jeopardy. If a villain can do everything, there's no suspension, suspension disbelief. Set up a situation where there are limitations, where characters are flawed, they don't know something... Guess what? A character like, well, Nog, I mean, we talked about Nog yesterday. If he mm -hmm. was started out as the officer was at the end, okay, but he developed. 
He was mm. very flawed. He couldn't do things. Then he could. They learned. Boom, boom, boom. That was a good story. So, you know, um, it's like giving cloaks to Klingons so early on. It's like well, that devalues all the cloak talk, all the evolution of cloaks. It devalues everything instantly. Mm. I've already forgotten about them. Except, I guess, in season two, at the end, they brought a cloak in for no reason. Well, for a reason. Dumb reason. Mm. Uh, lack of thought. Lack of th- yeah. At least, you're, at least you're, they didn't show us any Discovery Klingon ships. They knew better. They sold the Eagle Moss. They made their millions, and they're never going to use them again. At least they did get that memo. Few. <laughs> yeah. Fleet Pass with back put in dollar ninety nine. Pain for Foley's live last night. Fifty likes. Oh. Thank you very much. And good tea, nice house puts in five dollars Canadian. Thank you. Uh, like I said last night, we don't know how or when Pike died after the events of the Menagerie. Star Trek Discovery could bring him to the future and heal his injuries. Absolutely, they could. Because um, who knows how long he can live on on Talos? Because you know they they could extend his life quite a bit or find a way to transport him to the future if they really wanted to. You know, there's lots of things that could happen. But uh, the, the problem yeah. is same thing. The limitation of knowing his death is not immortal. Like that's fun, a finite end. I mean, Pike was never a god. Pike was a very very flawed man. That barely, barely got through that day. Mm-hmm. You know, don't make him the most special man ever. You know, Kirk barely deserves the what he went through, but he kind of, you know, went through all simple stuff first. Um, so yeah, as, as we talk about uniforms and like I say, I'm very happy with these as a as a uniform person. I mean, so are you. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. this first iteration we see with Archer, where no collar. No black underneath it, but it's you know a variation, obviously sciencey ish. Mm-hmm. And then you have this other variation, which has a, a different sort of feel to it. But these are at least are abandoning Discovery era. It's now you know what it should be. But you got this secondary guy who's in just like a turtlenecky, like simple shirt without uniform, which is confusing. But hey ho. And then this lady that's got a full Discovery variant, but with the mm-hmm. fixed collar. And she's got the wrong collar though. And mm-hmm. they've also got another variant. Uh, we were saying these two ladies have a different, slightly different foot. That's a, that's a color. Uh, a slightly different variant as well with what they're wearing. That's more cage like. So there's definitely some interesting variations in that short trek. I'm really excited to see. Because so they're going to get mm-hmm. some serious fan cred points if they start pulling it close to cage, despite cage being years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, go to, no, go to where no man. More for well, that. we're also not 100% sure when this happens in the events True. of the timeline so it could be a, a look back so although now we know because of the short trek when spock booms aboard and they're wearing the discovery enterprise uniforms and yet years later years later mm. they say oh you got new uniforms yes mm-hmm. they're not new then are they <laughs> yeah <You> idiots true <laughs> stupid writing yeah ASJ Personal says, Axanar is a bit of a joke, to be honest. I can't believe people have an issue with how Discovery looks. It's visually stunning. You're absolutely right. It is visually stunning. But uh, Gar- Gareth uh, Fairclough says, the problem is that it simply doesn't fit. If it were set in the 25th century, it would. And I have to agree with that uh, wholeheartedly. Um, I think the look that they went for in Axanar is, it's, it suits the period. It suits the, it's a period piece. It suits it. It's fine. Um, I wish they could. I wish they could do that with Discovery, um, personally. But that's just me. I'm just I mean, an old school Trekkie. There was a film in last year or the start of this year, which um, was visually amazing, but the movie was awful. Everyone was said because the characters are boring, and it was the same lady from Suicide Squad, the villain. Mm. And it was a famous franchise that you know then got buried because. They failed to make a good film. And it's like, well, there you go. That was their that was their shot. And uh, let me just find what it was called. It was the Huntress was in it. Hmm. Uh, see full cast. There's a lot of cast in that one. I've got to go through it. Uh... Well, while you're doing that, uh, we got uh, Lookout Tower Radio puts in one pound with no comment. But thank you very much. Very Dang. appreciated. Uh, and yes, the, the events of the cage are canon because they were shown in the menagerie. So it was that as well. 
Uh, for me, the idea of going to the future to stop control was an interesting idea to Elmira Philip Giorgio stop control. Mm. It could have been written a better written episode. Yeah, they didn't need to follow through with the going to the future thing. They could have stopped that last minute. And we know for a fact they could put the information on the suit. The suit can travel in time. We didn't need censorship at all. Yeah. It, it's all in the it's all in the film. Uh, it's all in the show, and they they don't even do their own logic, which is a shame. Or is it even not her? Uh, Valerian. There we go. Valerian, the city of a thousand planets. Ah, uh, yes. Visually stunning, but panned and not a good film. So visually stunning does not being visually stunning. If you can, if you can have people ignore the plot because it's so pretty. I mean, plot should come first. You know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. the film Moon. Have you seen Moon? Uh, yes, yes, I did. Not visually stunning. No. Visually great, simple. Brilliant film. Great plot, great acting, everything else. Tense, whatever. Uh, Alien <laughs> 1. Not visually stunning, because actually it's grungy and dirty and whatever. Great movie. Discovery. Visually stunning. Lack of thought, lack of story, lack of characters. Um, doesn't. It's not going to win out uh, on those things. But it does deserve the Emmy for, you know, it does deserve makeup award, because makeup's always good. But, mm-hmm. I mean, you just hire really good people and you can do good makeup. I mean, Wes Moore did good makeup for... 20 years, I hope he got some awards, because his makeup was, you know, I mean, just seeing, you know, there's some great shots of Nog from yesterday's Valiant, or when we did the Valiant episode, and the makeup's like, that holds up so goddamn well. You know, I'm right in his face, and it looks amazing. You know? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Looking at the chat here, see if it's just anything good. Um, if they made it look like it did in the 60s, they wouldn't draw as many fans as, oh, for, I'm so sick of that argument. You can make it look good. Well, fin- finish the comment. We'll both respond to it. As they are, yeah, wouldn't drive as many fans as they are with Discovery and Picard. As the franchise needs new fans to survive, and I want it to live another fifty years. I totally agree with you wanting it to live another fifty years, and it will. Uh, considering they've, as as I said, period piece they visited a few times. They always make it true to what it should be, because it's a it's Star Trek's vision of the future, not our vision, not the future from where we are right now which is what they're making discovery look so you need to and you can visually update tos as we've said many times to make it look the same yet add a few little things that make it look good to a modern audience yeah um and uh i mean because star trek picard is clearly just a i mean who's gonna watch star trek picard just star trek fans so that or that that you know no one's gonna click star trek picard who doesn't hasn't seen the show just because Patrick Stewart's in it, I mean, he, you know what I mean. He's, he's not a draw, ex- unless you're an X Men fan. You know what I mean. Uh, and maybe American Dad. That's only for, that's only for Trekkies, really. And then mm. Discovery is. I mean, it's just generic sci-fi. So unless you just want to watch, that's more like a bingey Netflix. Who cares? Put on the background. You know, I had a friend that never saw Star Trek, watched it, and then watched it on a weekend, and said so it was good, and didn't think anything of it. It's like, okay, that was another show. And it's got nothing mm. to say or or do. Um, but the fact is, most Trek fans are either first generation or the children of Trek fans because you get you share it with your kids, you share it with their kids. That's how it yeah. grows, and then you most of you find it whatever. You know, m- most fans of JJ went back and watched original Trek and like that stuff more because it's just high quality content. Uh, mm. You know, I mean, short Treks aren't going to get new fans. Discovery wasn't going to get new. You know, Discovery used the JJ fans. Who a lot of them went back and watched the original series and, and like that more. So, you know, if you want to make generic sci-fi to get new fans, fine. But new fans will be much more surface level. You know, it's like um, Transformers the first one, the Michael Bay one. How many people who watched that went back and either watched or bought the original '60s cartoon? Oh, there was no '60s cartoon. You, it was '80s. There you go. But you, you know what I mean. That film did not represent anything of the original. So why would you generate a new audience for that stuff? You wouldn't. But you create this new audience that love that stuff. But the old fans are like, well, it's not Transformers. And then Bumblebee comes along, and mm. old fans like it, new fans like it. New fans it. like it, yeah. It's a good story. Random people think, oh, Haley Seifeld is really good. And oh, that trailer looked cool. I've heard of Bumblebee. Zeitgeist is just a good movie. So, disagree completely. There are ways of doing it properly, but, mm-hmm. you know, there is not doing it properly. And there's, you know, it's not they're doing it the worst way, because at least, at least Spock was done well, Pike was done well, the Enterprise Bridge was done well. Um, but, I mean, the, the Discovery Prize bridge is better than the JJ Prize bridge. Sure. But, you know, mm-hmm. other things and well, bits and bobs. Well, 
Gareth Fairclaw says, but regarding the sets and the look, if you're going to have adults bringing in their kids to the franchise, you need a commonality, a bit of nostalgia while still updating. And a perfect way of saying it, um, have it look like it did, but modernize it a bit. And that's perfectly acceptable. I mean, if Discovery, the ship, was a, an Andorian ship of the TOS era and it looked like that, we'd be fine with it because we never saw an Andorian ship on the inside that time period. It would, it would be perfectly fine to look the way it does in Discovery. Uh, the colors, the, the hologra holograms, yeah, uh, things like fun. that. Um, because we've never seen the inside of an Andorian ship. Mm. Don't say it's a Federation ship. Say it's affiliated with the Federation. It's it's working with the Federation. Andorian custom build, just for just for standards. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. I like that. Well, yeah, it would, would make sense. Uh, cool. You can say that Andorians have something special with their engines that can hook up to the Propri ICO network Propri easier. Propriety hologram technology that they never share in hundreds of years. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just... just the discovery is such a departure from the time period it's supposed to be in that it just it it's it's it sticks out like a sore thumb and yeah sure you're going to pull in new people but you're going to confuse the hell out of them too when they go to watch the other star treks and go why does this look so much more advanced than what we see in TNG cuz that's we're, what they're going to say we're just saying there's a way of doing it better absolutely there is um you know uh there's the there's the what i mean discovery is is very much which is weird how Discovery, uh, Last Jedi, and Doctor Who all came at the same time, within a couple of years. Mm -hmm. The the tagline for uh, for Last Jedi was destroy you know kill the past, you know, let go of the past, destroy it if you have to. Saying fuck the continuity, fuck the people, we're going to move on, destroy everything, bombed hard slash fifty percent love it, fifty percent hate it. Discovery said we can do it all different, all completely new. Uh, who really cares what the old guys think? As long as we get new people, that's all that matters subscriber numbers they bring spock on to grab the old people because they need people mostly works but still the quality show isn't really up to where it should be doctor who completely radically changes everything doesn't really have the stories or the acting to to really do good and when you throw out all the continuity in terms of don't reference any of it then the old fans have nothing to grab onto because it's just fresh and fresh if not good is not good and now the excitement level for the new season doctor who is is very minimal ultra minimal as is the, mm. as is the excitement beyond the fact that you know it, it should be better for the new Star Wars and Discovery Season 3 look at the excitement of all three films all three franchises and they're less than they were before they rebooted them mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, Force Awakens before we thought it would be you know changing things were all amazing excited for you know a new Star Trek show when we heard it was just a new Star Trek show amazing excited for uh, and then Doctor Who woman now ah, we'll see you know um, yeah well, we have another super chat, but I want to read one comment before that and uh, address that. ASJ Personnel says, a lot of issue come... Oh, hold on, Stuart. You... In the 60s, it looked hold futuristic. On, you... Hold on, you, you zoned out. Obviously, reading really comments. I'll let you start that again. Sorry. All right. So ASJ Personal says, a lot of issue comes from stretching a franchise across many generations of actual tech innovation. In the 60s, it looked futuristic. Now, nope. Well, Star Trek is a vision of the future of the 60s. TOS. So you have to maintain that period piece within the Star Trek continuity. Um, and as we said, you can maintain that look because it does look futuristic still, despite what everybody says. And you can update it to look more modern and still be an extension of what we have tech-wise today. Because Star Trek TOS is not a vision of our future right now. It's a vision of the future of the 60s. But it's in the Star Trek timeline. It's the continuity. You have to maintain it. And they have done that successfully over the past 50 years. You know, Stuart, when I watched Rogue One, I instantly thought those <laughs> those green monochrome displays, yep. what a stupid thing. I mean, technology has gone so much more advanced. They should be, everything should be a touchscreen. I mean, I looked at those little flip buttons in the X-Wings, and I thought, this is garb, absolute garbage. Star Wars Universe, we've had so many more iterations since the 70s. Everything mm -hmm. should be touchscreens. Everything should be bright. You know, they shouldn't be using orange jumpsuits. Are you kidding? Should be having nice lycra with all the thing. I don't know, modern flight suity stuff. I mean, it was mm -hmm. a garbage film because they use all the old tech yep. that just didn't age well because now we've got better tech. And the I fact totally that Star agree. Wars doesn't matter what the universe is, we've advanced. Obviously. I mean, those Star Destroyers, I mean, they look like shit. They were white and look a miniature. I mean, come on. We can do better now. We can do glowy things. We can do big details. I mean, they looked really bad. Look like a miniature. 
And no one wants a good CGI looking like a miniature from the 70s of a high quality multi million budget film. Are you kidding, Stuart? You see, right? you see why arguments like this doesn't really work? We, we should have a sarcasm meter on the side there because that yeah. was ratcheted right up. I know I lost it for the, the Star Destroyer, but the, the tech certainly follows. But yeah. guess what? Rogue One ever watched it and thought, that's good Star Wars. Didn't think for a second. Um, and they still updated a few things, you know, which mm -hmm. you can do, you should do. Um, mm -hmm. That's how you do it better, at least. Yeah. See how the argument doesn't work? Well, he's, he's, he's saying you didn't actually say anything, though, because sarcasm, good one. But uh, Oh, okay, let me say it properly then. Rogue One, respect to the visual continuity, despite it being 30, 40 years old, didn't update any go. monitors, and it looked absolutely fine. It looked like it fit in the era, because his entire Gareth Edwards director's key motivation was to make it fit in New Hope. If they actually visually updated everything to, based on modern tech, it would have looked very odd watching New Hope, uh, Rogue One to New Hope. Because, you know, if you if they have, well, they already have holograms and toggles. I mean, they have the, they have the plethora, but they didn't visually update it and it looked great. Because it was consistent and respectful and, and every fan loved it. For, you know, um, whereas Discovery, you got this massive chasm. Whereas JJ, you can dis you can not like JJ, you can dislike it for artistic reasons, but you can't say it's not canon in our universe, which is why it was clever. Oh, now he appreciates your uh, point because it was an intelligent response. Okay. So, yeah, I, I, I never do, I never, never really do sarcasm, but I thought that was important because it's, it's a yeah slightly so daft argument. Makes it real, makes people realize how stupid it sounds when yeah. yeah. SWTX Chaser puts in five dollars. Story is king. A great story can make you overlook a canon problem, like Chekhov on Star Trek Two and and Khan scene. That's not a canon problem. He wasn't he wasn't a bridge crew officer at that point. He was still aboard the Enterprise, but like he's the maybe ran into him in the washroom because he was not promoted to bridge crew yet. So it's not an issue really. But yeah, <laughs> story can make the difference writing can make the difference absolutely and uh, you know um if pike show what's the thing what's about discovery if the story's good we can forgive a lot and i was saying that every week until the end and then you realize the story's not very good at all and really it breaks down poorly but some some individual episodes are good i mean everyone everyone says that third one that Riker directed on the planet is actually a good story and the episode holds up way better because that as a standalone if Pike tramples over canon, or at least doesn't trample anymore, but has every single week's amazing story, I'm going to forgive the visual continuity stuff, because obviously it's not, it's just we ignore it, but the stories are good. The stories are good and worth having. Um, but it's like, you shouldn't invent a, you shouldn't invent a show because of market pressure. You know? Uh, try and have a story first, have a reason for existing. You know? Um, hopefully there's a, there's something you want to tell with this. There's a, there's a story first. You know? It's like, uh, uh, Patrick Stewart didn't come out of retirement until they pitched him a good story he wanted to tell. Yeah. You know, we hope it wasn't really just the paycheck when Brent Spine was just the paycheck. Um, we'll see. And I want to address good old gamers' non subject comment. Uh, can a TOS set be properly filmed in widescreen? It wasn't a big thing yes. back then, so I'm curious. I mean, look at Star Trek Temporal Anomaly, the fan film. It's an anamorphic widescreen. All the TOS sets are an anamorphic widescreen cinemascope, and they look great. Mm -hmm. You can film them in any aspect ratio you want to, they'll still look good. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, I feel like some of the TOS are more advanced than later, and because sometimes the computer can detect the threat and put up the shields or screens itself. I must have missed something there. I thought that was a different comment. Um, was TMP a visual update of TOS? No, absolutely not. It was a progression of the tech. That's why they made a big point of saying they've spent 18 months re totally refitting and overhauling the Enterprise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of people say, oh, it's a visual re reboot, it, whatever, and it's not the case. It's just it's a progression of tech from – because you had another two years of the five-year mission plus uh, another almost two years for the refit to happen. So you got f at least four years, maybe more space in there for tech to advance. Plus, plus they, remember, they were out doing a five-year mission. They were out on the outer – frontier coming back yeah there'd be tech advancements that they haven't had access to and actually star trek continues makes a good point of that uh in one of its last episodes where it says the the enterprise is kind of outdated now um which is a bit of a shame to hear but it, it was what? true it needed to go back and get the refit and uh i think that was absolutely fantastically well handled so yeah it is not a visual reboot 
at all. It is a progression of tech. With, it's like TNG. It's not a visual reboot. It's the smartest thing you could have done, put it in the future. Swipe a card yep. won't be a visual reboot. It'll just be the future. Now, they might ruin a few things along the way. Uh, like, I don't I don't appreciate the uh, bridge with holograms around him that he's just controlling. That's like modernistic, we want to have sci-fi techie approach, whereas just, as you know, it's like all of Star Trek history went like this, like a gentle upswing, and then say, whoop, up, like that, so, oh, oh, there's a different producer. So I kind of appreciate JJ in a sense, because they had consoles that was very, like, grounded in their odd aesthetic, but it wasn't, like, mm -hmm. pushing it too far. Holograms kind of go against the grain of what Trek was doing, because it's more practical not to have holograms, really. Well, Gareth Fairclough says, make the displays meaningful rather than randomly placed blinky lights. Well, they are, actually. If you look at... Um, sets like James Colley's sets, uh, the upper parts, the screens actually have information. The the little you can't see it in the, in the uh, in the show, let's say, but there's little information. Actually, the a lot of the switches on the consoles, even in TOS, were labeled uh, with white labels. You never saw that, but it was there. Uh, it all means something. So I mean, personally, I would, you know, I, I would have the blinky lights be a a display of data rather than a functional screen and mm -hmm. I would just completely design a new LCAR system with the same colour scheme and so therefore from afar it was colourful but appropriately technical I would I would abandon mm -hmm. those boxes uh, except for like two displays and be like yeah those because that's the point of those displays you know they show information whatever um, but that's, a, that's, a, that's the smallest thing you could possibly have a comment on is change the glowy boxes you know the, there's a reason why the military asked Matt Jeffries in the production to help them with the design of their own stuff because the bridge is such a well-designed thing. You know, you look at Discovery Bridge and it's like, R really? Fire the phasers! <laughs> How are the, how's the spore dry? You know, there's a reason why in, in TOS Kirk just go, fire. Cool. You know. Uh... Yeah, Pike liked to get up and walk towards the front of, so that they could hear him. He does that a lot in <laughs> Discovery. Um, just because it's such a basketball court of a bridge. Well, let's go back but, to the, the cop, uh, topic, the topic. And we've got 134, 134 people watching, 100 likes. Uh, is Pike Show a good idea? Now, I think it, you could say it's a good idea in terms of that's what people have been asking for, but they're asking for... It, it, it would have been good if it was a replacement for Discovery. Like, if Discovery had 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 Michael Burnham go off to the future, never to come back, her story's done. Discovery gets, you know, sent back to dry dock, spore drives stop, therefore the reason for the ship no longer exists because it's built around the spore drive. And now season three, they re retool the sets drastically and now you got uh, whatever, Enterprise. And maybe because Pike likes the crew of the Discovery, he says, come on, Colber, be a chief, be a medical officer on my ship. Come on, Joshua. Come be a you know night shift officer on my ship. You did good. That probably would have been a smarter idea. Have Discovery season two end neatly and then jump into Enterprise. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, Pike iteration. Yep. And then you get to have the Discovery cast come in and, and play bit parts like have the Admiral if if you didn't kill her. I mean, come on, that would have been the best thing because then suddenly you've got a fresh Enterprise look. It's been damaged to season two, so you can refit it a bit. Because now the budget of the entire season's on the show, you can change the set to make it look more appropriate, but not too much, obviously. And you've got the tensions of the Klingons, but the, the, the simple fact that we just almost, we saved the galaxy, so we've got a tempered alliance. And now imagine you have Pike being an unwitting negotiator with the Klingons, and Lorel doing yeah. cool things and some politics there, and, you know, that would be great. That would be interesting. Um, from the eyes of these characters, and the, and the sets being tweaked a bit, and, you know, new uniforms, because, you know whatever whatever it's really exciting yeah i totally agree it would have been a nice discovery was like a, a thing that just faded into a new thing that was better mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now they're gonna have them running concurrently if they do do a pike series which i still don't have faith that they're gonna do i think that they're gonna do more of the short trek uh, approach with pike and that's fine i guess it's just i don't know if it'll make a lot of people happy too little well the irony is that if they haven't got the same, um, not ball and chain, but the same people looking at them, the short trucks can be more interesting, more creative, and more true to Trek. It's not the flagship. You know, yeah. Some of our best Trek might be all the short treks because they can just be 
you know, basically they're all stuck to Ratha Khan. It's like, right, Mr. Writer, you have $50,000 and these seven sets go. And it's like, shit, that it? They have to have good stories and clever stories. There might, might be some of the best track easily in terms of the, what we've had modern. Yeah. Fleet Pass Whipback puts in a dollar ninety nine and says, "Sweet, hundred and two likes. Keep it up, folks. Yeah, everybody hit like and make sure you're subscribed. That's important." Um, but uh, uh, it's a weird thing in the Trek universe. Space travel and starships are probably all the rage in 2019, but in reality, it's nothing of the sort. Uh, okay, I missed the point of that, but. Uh, refitting a ship doesn't always change its outward appearance. No, not always. Absolutely not. Um, Unless you do an outward refit. Yeah, it was an extensive overhaul from the the, the space frame up. Yeah. I mean, look at... Uh... Well, it doesn't matter. No. Uh, let's see. Refit... Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. They had a perfect transmission... Uh, transition point moment in the final scene of Discovery, and then went for season three. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we discussed that at the time too. Yeah, would have been the perfect way to uh, transition on because originally Discovery was supposed to be an anthology series. Each season was supposed to be either a different time period or a different crew, or whatever. Um, and that would have been you do two seasons of something and then move on. That'd be fine and have a link between them, and that would be the perfect link. Uh, having Pike be on Discovery for season two, and then all of a sudden there's a Pike show for two years, or I mean, something. Theoretically, if you if that was, although we know the anthology was the very earliest pitch, it was very quickly yeah. turned off that. Yeah. So I mean that's like, you know, um, uh, well, you know, if if you, this was only two seasons, then because they're so radically different, the seasons there's very little connective tissue. Even the spore drive gets all gets thrown out of the window, uh, except as a plot device. I guess the season two seasons, if again, if you just bottlenecked it, it'd be the arc of how we, of how we ha had war with Klingons and then made peace with them. Mm -hmm. You know, stupid people made a stupid war for stupid reasons, but that is what war is. It's warmongers doing stupid things for wrong reasons and radical people doing for wrong reasons and lack of intelligence from Burnham and, you know, who's prejudiced. I mean, you, they could have written it with good lessons, and by the end of season two, you had to you had to invent a, a fresh enemy with sci-fi conceit of time travel, a fresh enemy that threatened everyone to bring them back together. So you could argue that was the arc of the two seasons, to create this intergalactic conflict and then create intergalactic uh, neutrality. That could have been a natural two seasons. You know, mm -hmm. bit of out of left field to create a new villain uh, that dramatic. But hey, I mean, you know, you need a big villain to unite two of the biggest empires in the galaxy on the quadrant. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you know, okay. But obviously they were you know, rewriting season one as they went and rewriting season two as they went. So consistency isn't going to be top of the list. Can't it? Can't be. You know, it just can't. Yeah. Yeah. Gareth Fairclough puts in five pounds. Thank you Thank very much, you. guys. Would it be false to say that the best Star Trek stories have been those mm -hmm. that were smaller in scope, i.e., not universe-ending crisis of the day? Uh -huh. It would not be false in saying that. You're absolutely 100% correct. Uh, that's one of the reasons that a lot of the uh, TNG. Uh, movies failed because you have to have a big baddie you have to it has to be like planet destroying consequences or universe destroying consequences over you gotta 70 save the day. torpedo tubes or it's not impressive exactly um it doesn't always work for that structure for star trek that's why the movies were kind of eh. <laughs> uh but yeah the, the best trek moments absolutely are these smaller bottle shows or um definitely not the big baddie of the week episodes uh z german puts in five euros thank you very much uh greetings guys i think a four-part mini series where each part is a movie length or a one season series would be nice short tracks are too short I, I totally agree a mini series for pike i think would be the best way for cbs to grant what the fans want and you know, not have to invest too much into it, really, as far as it being a new series that they're going to have to do year on year on year. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to to fix the problem. Yes. Well, and not and not just that, but if you wanted to say short drives too short, make them twenty five minutes. Make make them comedy half hour Red Dwarf length. You know, then mm -hmm. they're they're short drives. Really, it's a season. Give them six half hours, and that half an hour twenty five minutes is not short. It, you can call it a short, but it's really not, it's a episode of TV. Just of a 
you know, Bob's Burgers and American Dad. I mean, you can get you can cover you can cover a lot of story into that. Mm -hmm. You've seen some of those episodes? Um, you know, just make them longer shorts. <laughs> yeah. Remember, we were we were questioning how long the shorts would be for season one. The, I mean, the first set of shorts, and they were pretty varied in length. We we're like, wow, one was like nineteen minutes. That's quite a long short, you know. Yeah. Uh, where is it here? Joseph Whiskey Beal says season one of Discovery had me rooting for Mirror Universe Lorca to win. Season two had me wanting uh, it to turn into a Pike series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I think Jason. Oh. Well, the bottom line is we want more Pike and Spock content because they were the best yeah. parts of season two. Yeah. But we don't want to allow the writers of Discovery to have any more time in that era left alone. It's not their sandbox. Shouldn't be their sandbox. Um, you know, or, or do a holodeck simulation conceit. That can be kind of interesting. Or, you know, ha ha have them jump to the past for a season. Lol, why not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jason Link puts in $1 with no comment, but thank you very much, Jason. $1 does and help. You, you guys don't absolutely. want to think that, but legitimately $1. Enough people give a dollar, it does mount up. So thank you. Thank yeah. you. And Captain Robert April puts in $5 and says, a video on my channel, How Star Trek Discovery Should Have Ended. Go <laughs> take a peek. Only a minute and a half. Uh, so, yeah, guys, go take a peek when this is over and uh, check out that. I, I want to check it out now. And a shameless and plug. What's the, channel, <laughs> what's the channel name? So it's Captain Robert April? Captain Robert April, yeah. Okay. Shameless plug is A-OK -okay by another captain. Uh, the Valyard uh, said I really enjoyed the Mirror Universe episodes would happily watch a miniseries on it mm. they were the best of season one uh, yeah I, I really should just go and design the Enterprise bridge like properly I really should just do that at some point like, we should, we should mm -hmm. do our own versions I think. Like, you could work with Barry, I could work with my guy uh, that could be really fun. Like, how would we do a uh, present present them? Is how far do we each go? Or how not far do we go? You know. Yeah. I'd be I'd be really down for that. I would be too. Something we should consider for sure. Mm. Bill Barkley says, "We'll still be playing more Trek VR later." Yes, later tonight. Cool. Tune in. I, I didn't do it last night. I did an actual live, and people are like, why aren't you playing Bridge Crew? Because people are enjoying it. It's really fun. So, Do do both. One for the I, I did one night, yeah. And it was great. You, just, yeah. you got like a, a lot of funds and then a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, that uh, can be kind of fun if you do like an hour and then... Because I, I, I loved watching the end of one to the other. You were like, right, I'll see you guys in a minute. <laughs> right, hey, hey guys, who's who's joining from the live? I, lo I love that little... Because like, you must have done like a minute apart because you were ready to go. You were saying that. It was about ten just... minutes. We had to get things okay. set up, but yeah. Okay. I just thought that was a wonderful like transition. I just thought that was really fun. Um, yeah. I enjoyed myself watching that, and the fact that you got, like did a walk and came in, and then like it was just, <laughs> it was just, it was just funny. It was just funny. Yeah. I I'm liked glad it. people liked it. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll be doing some tonight. For well, sure, and yeah. and it's nice because if you do like the normal live gets on people watching, but then if they really like talking to you, then they'll just keep watching the other thing. I mean that's a good way of actually just getting more people. Or we could also do also do bridge crew and then have a live afterwards so that we can discuss what happened in yeah. bridge crew. Because <laughs> that's that's the funny thing. People don't realize that we you know we make this stuff because we want it to be watched. Like we're not echo we're not an echo chamber, and that's why we think that's one reason I think lives are great because you you, know, you guys saying things can change our minds. We can change your minds. We can talk about it. That's cool. We're not an echo <laughs> chamber. We want to hear opposing thoughts. We want to hear you know if you've got. You know, although we like to use um, not informed decisions, but but explain why. If you just say I liked it, Discovery Season One, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. But if you can give us a why and break down technically or, or whatever, um, that's and not fun. be insulting. There's just people that, are, you know, you're all haters and blah, and just we're really not. That's it's not constructive. So and as you guys know about all of the uh, all the other YouTube channels that are more actively hate. A bull hating, you can say you can definitely agree we are on the very low end of that spectrum. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Furious Fawn says, "In how many hours exactly? Well, probably around ten thirty, eleven. I would think Eastern Standard Time is when I'll be doing it, but it varies from night to night." Z German puts in five euros. 
on a one-off Pike or a one-off Pike movie. Short and sweet. Anyways, off to watch Magnum. How cool would a Magnum holodeck episode of TOG have been? A TNG have been cut. That would have been awesome, but that's just because I like Magnum PI. So, you know, not everybody be into it. <clears throat> but enjoy. Uh, and Eugene shows up with 2,500 rubles. My goodness, man. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm crunching pretty much... I'm crunching pretty much whole week. Missed you. Feel sorry about Aaron Eisenberg news. Don't know about a Cap Captain Pike, but Anson Mount show is a good idea. <laughs> um, and can I just say, that was one of his biggest donations ever. And that was yeah. a lot of dollars. So that's yeah. that's... That really makes us almost forty dollars. I mean, obviously, huge potatoes are cut, but that just made the live amazing. Uh, what, what are you crunching? What's your work, Eugene? Don't know if we know what it is. Cause that's a video game design because their their crunches can be real, real killer. But thanks for yeah. stopping by. And, and are you are you coming on Saturday, Eugene? We'd love to have you there. We always have yes. interesting things to say. Um, yes. And Bill Barkley says, Stuart, have you watched the new Magnum PI? Yes, I have, and I like it. So there. I'm watching different YouTubers go live more and more. YouTubers get mentioned on these live videos. Yeah, live is a great way to interact with your community. Yeah. Um, like we said, when we did the podcast where we just filmed it, you know, it's much more fun to engage with you guys and mm -hmm. generate more conversation. So live is a great way for YouTubers to interact. So, But we're very keen to never stop doing edit edited content and guest content and yes. renders yeah, and animations because that means... You know, we built our fan base based on that, and that's why you guys are here because you look at our opinions. But just doing lives is redundant. I feel um, it's a, it's a secondary content. That's why I love the fact that we do the TNG reviews because that's a show. We have a bit mm -hmm. of a preamble, but that's because when people join the lives, people don't miss the start. But it is a show. It is a very. It's actually you know the fact that it fits into two hours, almost fully organically every time. We don't like stretch it. We it's. It just takes two hours to properly review an episode in the same format. That's a show. You can watch it and you can enjoy it. And as long as you <laughs> skip the little first bit, I mean, it's a show. Um, maybe not reviewed by a lot of people, but it's enjoyed by a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Morden is alive. Star Trek Picard tells off 21st century politicians for being idiots. <laughs> Uh, ASJ Personal Kowalski is probably my favorite Trek YouTuber. He has a bit of a different take, but remains respectful and isn't guilty of gatekeeping. Yeah, Kowalski's great. Um, I enjoy watching his content as well. I just like the fact that we do animations and renders and scripts and like mm -hmm. it's not just it's not just talking about stuff as in like news stuff. It's actually generating content content. Yeah, with new stuff. You know, I, I just I don't like just using screen caps you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys noticed that ever since I talked to CBS directly it's like I, I, we don't ever use clips because they'd rather we didn't and we make new stuff you know, if, if it's like when we did the Stargazer episode um, I you know I, I made like seven stills of Battle of Praxia yeah. know, it's like because I'd rather make new stuff than trying his old stuff ah Eugene's coding fair queuing system for local airport cargo terminal Jesus that sounds wow. like I have some pressure on you for that well good luck don't um, mess it up <laughs> it's important that it works. Uh, uh, Dan twenty three. Oh, oh. Uh, no! I mean, I watched a live video from someone, and in the comments, someone talked about Trek Yards, and then the person doing it didn't know who you were, and people explained, but he didn't get it. Oh well. well. Who was That's the a shame? Who was the person going live, Dan? I'm interested. I'm intrigued. Yes. Um, we're not talking about Magnum, guys. We'll <coughs> talk about that with me on one of my late night lives because that's more of a Captain Foley personal discussion. Oh, thanks, Brian. See you Saturday because you're going to be there, Brian. You can't not be your regular. <laughs> see the see the chaos, the chaos that ensues. Like I'm even, yes. I, I'm even mentally getting more prepared for it. I've got all of my ciders right here next to the computer. I've got all in a nice little lineup. I've got five. Five ciders right there, which is way more than I had last time. And I've got Aren't they supposed to be cold, food. though? Well, yeah, but it's just so that I know where they are, like... Oh. They're mentally closer is all. Um, gotcha, but yes, gotcha. I'll put them in the... I'll swap them out and put them in the... The fridge. I'll steal most of the fridge. And I'll, I'll have Sylvia 
preparing drinks for me and bringing me bringing Ooh. my drinks. Ooh. And she'll chime in every once in a while with her thoughts or whatever. Well, we we had the the admiral admiral shot ultra super chat, um, and that mm-hmm. was great because if like three people give an admiral big super chat, that like makes the entire chat worth it. You know, <laughs> we don't ask for much, uh, yeah. and it's amazing you guys can keep can keep giving, keep supporting, and we get to keep doing it because boy. Yep. As someone said earlier, um, I apologize, I was going to mention it then, but we kept talking. The fact there's a new Trek, I mean, on TV it's pushing it. For you it's on TV, but most of the world it's not on TV. <laughs> it's only a TV show for Canada, the rest of the world is not a TV show, it's an online streaming show. Um, yeah. But, you know, good, good, good. Good, good, good. Hmm. Yeah. Come on, Dan. Uh, Dan, did you, did you say which YouTuber? Didn't see a comment, Dan. Come on, Dan. Tell us who. She doesn't know. Hi, Lizzie. Lizzie's here. Go to sleep. Soon. Late. ASJ Personal says, now that we know season three is happening and being filmed, which we knew quite a long time ago, um, are you excited at seeing the Federation in 900 years? Lots of possibilities. Oh, absolutely. I'm excited to see what what they're going to do with this because they have free reign now. They have a totally open world and time to mess up. I mean, work in. Uh, so... It'll be interesting to see. Absolutely, I am excited. Wouldn't it be amazing? And this is the song I would do is like, like even if I was the producer of Discovery, right? I'd I'd throw an amazing curveball. Where first scene Burnham, you know, she like slams down a planet isn't Terralisium. Wouldn't it be great if right as that happens, you see a legitimate 29th century uniform guy beam in. Cut to the ship relativity, same set. They rebuilt it. Like yeah. you go straight from Discovery Cannon into <coughs> this cannon, they're like, "Excuse me, uh, this tech is not appropriate," and then they try and send them back, but the timeline's been all like, the timeline's such in a flux that they can't, and then they just like disappear or something. Like th- then the burn has to fix it, or whatever. Like literally go from Discovery Cannon to instantly like actual cannon, like one to one perfect, and then it re like it doesn't re. I'm just saying, I'm not saying anything resets because it's still be Discovery, but it'd be like, Gu- guys, because because. If they travel in time where they shouldn't be, you not only, relativity you not only, should be ignore, acknowledging this. That's their you job. You not only time traveled, you also dimension hopped into the prime timeline. <laughs> well, yeah. Anyway. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because as we always say, where is relativity? Why didn't relativity, yeah. st- why didn't relativity step in? Because they're only in the prime timeline. They're only in the prime time. Because yeah. they shouldn't let control send its AI back into the past to help become AI in the present. What a stupid AI plot. Stupid. Yeah. Shane Acri puts in five dollars. Thank you. Uh, listening every day while working in my car helps the time go by quicker. Well, Thank we are you. glad. We're glad that you're listening. Just be safe. That's all. That's all we care about. Yes. Keep 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 your eye on the road and your ears on track yards. Dumps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And obviously the TNG lives are great for a road trip because that's just two hours of road trip. And come on. If we all know Star Trek TNG like we should, you don't need to see the visuals. You know what's going on. I, yeah. I think we all know that. Yeah. Uh, so. Did Dan comment? No, he did not I still. So. The, the, oh. the chat's generated in talking about remaking 80s shows. <laughs> so. Why? Why? We had, we had a period in the, in the early 2000s where they were doing new things. Why is everything a revival now? Everything? I mean, they're redoing Battle Gattaca again. That's it's, dumb. It's dumb. I mean, at least at least in the Royal D more continuity, so they're not okay. They're not swapping everything out. Uh, well, the great thing about that is that all you need to do to make a new show on that is you just have like, if you want to make a visual update but the same universe, just say there was like a prototype Battle Star that was in development, secret to all twelve colonies, and it got you know everything got nuked. And they were still building. They didn't realize for like a couple of weeks they were secret. And then they were so far behind Galactica, they never. They, why would you think to go that way? And so there's a completely unique ship. And obviously, Silence wouldn't mention it because they want to kill it their own way. And la la la. You could do some kind of fun with that. Make it like a really spanking, branking new, brand spanking, not spanking, branking new, uh, <laughs> Battlestar. Um, so Battlestar. I mean, do another show in the universe. Don't call it Battlestar Galactica because it's not the Galactica. Or the Galactica yeah. A. You know, have it be in the future. Of the past doesn't really work. Um, no. no. But why all the old shows? Because things, you know. Because they they were successful once, and nobody has any 
good ideas and they want to make money quick. So they're going to bank on nostalgia. Because Discovery is the nostalgia. Picard is, while it is nostalgia, it isn't because it's it's bank on nostalgia to make money, but it's not bank on nostalgia to be a show. It's a new show, like it's another new Star Trek show. Discovery was another prequel no one wanted that was banking on nostalgia. Like, why stay in the universe if you don't try to get nostalgia? JJ was like mm. a, look, we're going to bank on nostalgia, was because actually it, I'm making a new show. Look, here's another Star Trek show. Yay. You know? Mm-hmm. It's like Enterprise is not banking on nostalgia because it's so far in the past that there is nothing to nostalgia. Like, that was a interesting idea when prequels weren't so much a thing. I mean, back in 2001, how many prequels were there? Not a lot. Now, quite a few. Quite a few. Hmm. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so. You alright there? <laughs> yeah, I'm just mentally drained. Um, but yeah, as for the question at hand, is a Pike show a good idea? Absolutely for CBS, yes. But for the fans, maybe not. <laughs> um, it all depends on how they handle it. That's the simple sum up summation of what we talked about, I think. Um, <clears throat> or if it was, if it replaced Discovery, then it would have been what? Then it probably been good for the fans. Except for the fans of Discovery, because there are fans that really love Discovery. But then, those probably are now more fans of Pike than of the original crew. You know what I mean? Like, there's more to like about that stuff. And I don't yeah. think any Discovery fans think season one's better than season two. Uh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> but. Oh, man. Uh, well, JJ's Trek is based on character nostalgia, and Discovery is based on timeline nostalgia. Neither has worked great. Uh, that's because. I mean, JJ's character. I mean, the, the, the casting for the cat crew was pretty good. Uh, I'd say it's more timeline nostalgia because it was set during the TOS time. If it was if it was set during the movies, it wouldn't be nostalgic, and you could have the same cast. Nah, eh, interesting. Uh, Rampant Fury nine two five puts in two dollars Canadian. A Pike show means we might see Kirk. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, season one is much better than season two. Give it five years and you will all agree with me, says Jude. You're welcome to that opinion. Uh, I mean, I mean, and I'd, I'd love to, to, can you give some like short reasons? I know you can t- type quite a lot in the chat. I mean, could you like type out your like top three reasons why? I mean, that's quite, yeah, we... quite a big comment. I mean, let us know. I will read them and we'll, we'll have a you know, mini conversation with you in the, in the thing. Uh, who said that? Uh, let's see. A new name that I didn't recognize. It is Jude Beacom. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. One Lorca, two Lorca. Well, that's just you liking one and element. three Lorca. I mean, that, now you're just playing, having a joke. Doesn't really. I'm asking a serious question. You know, I know it's sort of a serious answer, but I mean, but I, yeah, okay. Bill Barkley is able to come up against the Doomsday Machine in the Pike series. I mean, why though? Because that's before Kirk and Spock. Nice nostalgia be... again. It's like we want yeah. new. If you're gonna do it, do new. It has a new stories. Just don't stump on the old stories. Like, like, yeah, they can't win because they put themselves in a really weird era and a really weird time and a really weird continuity and a really weird costume and really weird characters. Like, if it was the Yorktown or the Valiant, another constitution class with a brand new captain, brand new crew, all you know is they die in four years. That's all you know, you know? Mm. That would be smarter if you don't want to go that far and have a constitution class, then you wouldn't have to do all the canon stuff. Uh, instead of a Pike series, can we just have Anson Mount and his own sci-fi show, but essentially playing Pike? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Discovery is dead if they make a Pike show. It's dead with the it's dead with Picard and the new shows. They're gonna out- outstretch it. Yeah. Uh, good night. Time for Germany to go to bed. Good night, Germany. <laughs> have a good one. Um. 
Kirk specifically says to Commodore Mendez that the time he, that he met Pike was when Pike was promoted to fleet captain and gave up command of the Enterprise to him. Yes. Did New Voyages did a storyline based on Doomsday Machine in the past that altered history? Yes. But that's that's fan fan fiction or fan film, so. Yeah, I'm I'm out of things to say. <laughs> There's nothing new in the chat to read right now, so Yeah, you know. Um it the the, the credit, as we've said, the credit to the actor, he went from being a, a curveball that could that could be a very Discovery Season 1 style mistake to being the best part of Season 2. Guess why? Because he represented Starfleet, he was positive, he was good at his job, he, you know, he he outshined the actors, he outshined Sneaker Martin Green, he made the crew feel like a family, he represented proper values, and because he, he is so good, and then what, Episode 7 we got Spock? Um, it's quite late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and he impressed us in, in half the time. Maybe less so? I don't know. Who impressed you more by the end? Uh, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. They're See? both they're both really good. Yeah. I mean I really liked I really liked Ensign Mount Spike though. Um but yeah, I, 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 I consider um Ethan Peck Spock to be better than Quentin um uh, Quentin Quentin Tarantino's, yeah. <laughs> no. Zachary Quinto. He didn't look good in the wig. Yeah. Look in the red yeah. wig. Uh, so it's, it's a compliment to them that they managed to turn a season into something much better, and also, you know, steal the spotlight and 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 their performances and and also the, the writers' writing, obviously. But you could tell the writers felt more inclined to treat them well, you know, yeah. with respect yeah. and with, I say reverence because they had lots of problems. I mean, one was in a psych ward and one got talked talked down by Werner all the time. But it's, you know, it, it contextually it works, uh, you know, the way they did what they did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a super chat from Rampant Fury nine two five. It puts another five dollars Canadian. Thank you. Uh, if Kirk did appear in the Pike show, who do you think would be a good actor to portray him? Oh goodness, I have no idea. <laughs> Probably an unknown. Uh, I would prefer. Which means I don't know them. So I'm sure there's lots of good young Kirks out there. But Shatner with the Disney de aging tech. No. <laughs> no. Um I mean if you if you I would say de age him and make him movie Kirk. That would work fine. Because he's big, put him in the uniform, mm -hmm. de age him that way. Great. Mm -hmm. Have him be late movie. You know, uh maybe he gets you know, uh, well, just to do the bring back Kirk thing finally, you know, have him come out of the Nexus. It was all a mistake. I'm undoing it. Yep. Yep. <sighs> like with Star Wars, I'm sure Trek is also bound by canon to some degree. Not really. <laughs> well, but, but we're yo yoing. Last Jedi ruined a lot of stuff. Yeah. Clearly, Last Jedi, nope, Rise of Skywalker. Is gonna really like try so hard to fix it. Scott seems to try to fix it a lot, but now they got the Picard canvas, and I think they're gonna actively try and fix a lot of stuff there. Even though the uphill battle is so much smaller there, you know. I mean, it, yeah. all they have to do is write Picard decent, and it'll be fine. Although it's amazing that like uh, Frake said he's some of his best work. And it's like, is that just marketing spin? Because that feels like marketing spin. <clears throat> Richard Kennedy, though, throws in £4.99. I do like Disco, but Pike series would be welcome, and hopefully Picard spawns a new show in that era that will delve into all things Trek. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of potential there for Picard to become something else um, and establish a new, a new place in the Star Trek timeline as far as, I don't know, post-TNG, so... Uh, 
at Trek Yards, the only way Kirk should show up in the Pike Show outside of time travel episode is at the very last shot, inserting Kirk from where no man has gone before as he beams on board to assume command. That would be amazing. That would be great. Well, I actually kind of love, and that was a sort of a joke, but I'd love to do it if, okay, jump to three years from now, Pike, Pike Show Series 3, and there's a two part in mid season where the Connie with Captain Kirk comes back because of the slingshot. We see Pike get destroyed, like Pike's Enterprise get blown up, right? And then it says one day earlier. And then we see another Enterprise, and it's a bit different, and we cut inside, and it's, you know, a new actor playing Kirk. And the timeline got changed, and Kirk was immune because God in forever, bullshit, whatever. And you actually have, yeah, Kirk from the future dealing with Pike in the present. So you, that's the Kirk cameo, is Kirk from, like, season four and a half of TOS. That's why we never got to see it. And that'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Robert Hayes says, We're no man has gone before it wasn't his first Enterprise mission. No, but uh, chrono- chrono- chronologically wise, it was before like the man trap and shit. They just released those before because it's weird the uniform change uh, because it was so. But to have him looking like he did in Where No Man Has Gone Before with that uniform beaming aboard, I totally agree with that. Uh, but yes, that, not his first Enterprise mission. But that'd be great. And because it would be great is exactly why you won't see it. It's just the writers. It's just it's just the writing, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that's really the the core of it. You know. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the Enterprise wasn't Kirk's first command. I thought it was, but okay. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, remember it turned about true they said women can't be captains how things change well yeah that's kind of explained in a number of different ways but yeah anyway with the pike show you only have three things that you have to do one enterprise survives two spock survives three pike survives other than that all bets are off you have seven years of storyline story time go sure uh, yeah, yeah. Although, you know, th- there is a few things you can retcon out of Star Trek without really any work. Like we say, the Katinga in Enterprise is just a retcon. You know, it was a mistake. It was always a mistake. Yeah. When they call, when Deanna calls Will Bill in early season <laughs> one, that's just a mistake. You know, when on on Kirk's tombstone it says his wrong initial, that's just a mistake. There isn't like, you know what I mean? Uh. So, um, saying the line of women in Starfleet, that's fine, it's a mistake. It, you know, TOS has more of them, but luckily most of it's amazingly consistent. You know, you're allowed to throw a couple of things out. Um, yeah. You know, it, 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 some things are just wrong. You know, and I mean, look, look, look at, one, sorry, one last note on that, look at the Enterprise. The Enterprise is 20 years old. The Enterprise is 40 years old. It's 20 years old, it's actually 40 years old. Like that, he, the Admiral couldn't have got it wrong by being an idiot admiral like he just read the memo so he, that's it again just another mistake you know it's yeah. just there are a few of those just they just crop up yeah and joseph whiskey beal i agree a thousand percent they Ooh. need trek fans writing trek not random writers who couldn't care less about the universe they're adding to dun dun mm. dun even though they all say they're huge star trek fans and always have been because that they have to tow the company line and say what do you like what do you like most about star trek um that's that Spock, you know, the pointy ears always, you know, always stood out to me. And, you know, it's like, wow, that's such a toe the line kind of answer. Well, obviously you're referring to the uh, Michelle Paradise, whatever her name is, the new showrunner. And her first interview was asked, yeah, oh, what's yeah. your favorite episode or favorite thing in Star Trek? And she referenced Spock. And it's like, that's your, and, and some odd moment. It's like, that's your favorite of all of Star Trek, showing that you probably haven't watched all of Star Trek and you probably aren't that invested but guess what? You just wrote Spock for a couple of episodes and you want to promote Spock and you like Spock right now. Great. Whereas, you know, yeah. favorite moment of Star Trek probably isn't TOS, probably isn't TNG, or, you know, it's some weird moment. I mean, we all have a very unique favorite moment, you know. One of my favorite moments is Intermirror Darkly when the Enterprise lights turn on. 
Mm-hmm. That's that because it's the way it's shot. More than anything else, it's just a very clever moment. You mean you mean the defiant lights? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Like that's <laughs> that, but that's a very specific answer that most people won't give. You know. Yeah. Um, I'd have to think about that. There's a lot of favorite moments in Trek, but is yeah. It just a generic. Oh, it's Spock because the morals. You know, it's like, that's yeah. why I don't. That's why I don't tend to go to like. Well, we both agree Guardian Forever isn't the best Trek episode. And um, we wouldn't. I wouldn't say Measure of Man's best Trek episode because it might be the best moral story, but it's not best, best Trek episode. You know, um, there's like the more mainstream answer versus the very niche fan, fanatic, you know, hardcore answer, which is which is more unique to each person because you've got different hardcore fanness. That's why most. That's why more people say favorite Trek movie is Star Trek, for the whale one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, because it's more just a, a generic, you know, fun answer. There's less people going to say Wrath of Khan because you have to see, you really should see Space Seed or First Contact because you need to see, you need to know who Picard is. Those are more niche, but arguably better movies. So it's kind of like, you know, yeah. Well, Captain Robert April says Harvey Bennett knew that the Enterprise was actually older, but he was afraid that if he said forty-five years, they'd confuse the audience. Well, who gives a shit. That's what. I, who care if you confuse the audience? That's a lot of decisions are made for that very reason, and they're wrong. The audience isn't completely stupid or not really give a shit. If, if somebody's that invested in Star Trek, they know the Enterprise is forty years old, but they say it's twenty. Those are the people that are going to be watching this movie over and over and over again for the next however many years, and going, "That's that's a mistake." The people that don't know anything about it that think the Enterprise is younger and they say 40 years old they don't they're not going to rewatch the, sh- the the movie necessarily and nitpick that so to, to, to change things because you think your audience is stupid or can't figure something out is dumb that's like the enterprise j uh doug had a great design for it that had the deflector down where it's supposed to be on the secondary hull which looks fantastic mm. i think it became the congo class and no, the producers wanted the the deflector in the saucer like the NX-01 had because fans of the show might be confused that there's, there's a lineage between them, and that's that's the dumbest goddamn reason I've ever heard in my life. Even though there's an, even though logically you'd say, well, the defi- the deflector being underneath lower shows a lineage with Enterprise E, and E is close to J. So that should be if anything. But if they, anything, they were they were they were banking on new fans not knowing that there are other enterprises. Sure. That's the stupidity of producers and the stupidity of those decisions. But you know what I mean? If, if they want, like, sh- logically, Doug would have put the deflector in the saucer because it links NX. They should have said, no, it should link to the E because the E is the logical connection. That's that's the way that conversation should have gone. Not the other way around. Um, that said, I mean, you know, swings and roundabouts, things evolve throughout time. You know, through time. I can't imagine every single Enterprise. Uh, I mean, I, it would be, I would find it very odd if every Enterprise, every further design gets more and more integrated to the point that it's flat. I mean, like, J is flat, but it's also a city, so it's not. It's huge. It's just... Mm. Like, it's a yeah. city ship. It's not a, It's not the same sort of thing anymore. It's a different sort of thing. Uh, you know, I, I would assume at some point the neck will come back because it, it's useful for different things. I mean, maybe you want to have a separation plane, maybe three separation planes. I have the, no idea, you know. Um, I don't know. You know, mm. Have a shuttle bay in the neck. That works well. Yeah, but just... To pander to the audience and think, oh, we get, we can't have something canonically correct because the audience won't understand it, is the stupidest decision-making process ever. Uh, these days, with executive producers wanting to be in charge and put their mark on everything. It's like, why would you make a Star Trek show not for Star Trek fans? To get new fans into the franchise, because otherwise the franchise will die. That's but their thinking. You just make really good quality TV and people will find yes. it. You know, I word agree. of mouth is important. Uh, I mean, Altered Carbon, alt, right? Uh, word of mouth. If it was a great show, I watched it, it was a great show. Mm-hmm. I, I, I wish I was a fucking Blu ray, but Netflix is exclusive, they don't do that. I would love a Blu ray. Love one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, about Battlestar Galactica, I think one most of the old fans over because it's a good quality show. It's not the old, it's not. Trying to be the old, it's it's very very different, but it's a really good quality show. I mean, no one can see the miniseries not say it's a good quality, it's a good concept. You know, thirty eight minutes is arguably the best episode of the entire season. The first episode of season one, it's such a tight story. You know, that is simple as anything, but it's 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 tremendous. You know, good stories should come first. And pe- you know, h- how many for Battlestar Galactica? How many new fans they get just because people said you should watch this new show called Battlestar Galactica? Yeah. 
you know, um, some people say you should watch this new Star Trek show. Oh, I don't like Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. It's just, it's just. Yeah, but the stories, man. The stories are amazing. The cast's amazing, and you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yes, Pike content, not Pike show. Pike web series, mini series. Yes. Yes. Do an entire season of short treks with them. Golden, golden idea. Um, because obviously I was at FedCon with both Pike and Spock and some Mountain Ethan Peck, and oh, I, I think he was. <laughs> It's always funny when actors feel they have control. Uh, you know, like like Nimoy did. He refused to say certain lines. Great. But he'd done it for 20 years. That's that's fine. He's allowed to. But Anson mm-hmm. actively said, if I do a show, I, I have very specific criteria to be in it. I want it episodic. I want it more like the original. I want it more exploration. These are things I want. Problem is, if CBS says, we want this, here's double your paycheck. He's unlikely to give away a big paycheck for an easy... Because Pike's not an easy... Pike's not a difficult role to act. Honestly, it isn't. It, he's not going to turn that down if you if you have enough money and maybe he can direct one episode or whatever. Uh, now, if he got his wish, if he really puts his foot down, that's great. They want episodic, or with some sort of over over narrative, but episodic primary because that's where Trek is its best. And they're self-contained, you know, um, with with morals and meanings, with fun, with ships, with tech, you know. <coughs> yeah. Well, guys, we should probably call this a wrap because we're talking about burgers. So we'll call this a wrap. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, who wants to be the final super chat of the night, guys? Uh, what are you having for dinner, supper? Uh, tonight, then, Stuart, what's your, what's your food plans? I am having beef shawarma. Shawarma, the Avengers' yeah. favorite food. Yeah, it's so good. How do you describe shawarma then? Um, it's just good. It's like some saffron rice with some strips of beef in it and some oh. garlic sauce on it and then some hot sauce put on top of that. And all mixed together and it's just so deliciously yummy. There's also a chicken version, but it's kind of frightened all the time. Five bucks for the dad joke. There we go. Oh, <laughs> Gareth, very close. It's As I said, perfect it. timing. I'm Captain Pike, and this is my favorite store on the Starbase. Do you get it? No, I don't. That is, I, I read it in the non super chat chat. I did too. <laughs> Dude, that is a great reference. That's an in joke to Mass Effect, the franchise, whereby uh-huh. Captain Shepard gets famous, and there's a part of the second game where one person, one person says, "I'll pay you if you endorse my store." The joke being is that the game's so open ended you can endorse every store there. They get paid by each mm-hmm. one. To the point that every time you walk into a store later on down the game, every single one says your voice says <laughs> It's just it's just a really clever little jokey subplot thing. Um cool. it's just really clever. And that game is clever. I that's I wanna really wanna do a playthrough with you on that. Like okay. that I really, really want because you'll absolutely love it. Um even okay. if I play it for you and you just story it, I think you'll really love it. Mm. Fleet Pass with back with some dollar ninety nine eggs, pancakes, and bacon. Mmm, yummy. That sounds good. And, and good night, Dan. I'm gonna do some more track cars editing. So <sighs> you sleep. Yeah, I'm gonna go eat. And everyone, please, please do join us on Saturday. Yes. Very excited for our live uh, drunk stream. Uh, I, I just think it's gonna be so much fun. So much I need good to, stuff to talk about. Yeah, I need to play Bridge Crew drunk sometime. Probably give me a headache and make me vomit, <sighs> but goodness the promises later see, tonight guys i'll be playing bridge crew so tune into that as well now see that sounds like the two hour live stream the first hour is you drinking pure super chat get drink second hour is you do the bridge crew <laughs> that sounds like a perfect two-parter might be a thing might be might a be. thing yeah. plus All i'm right. gonna do a, do, do a tos bridge crew night because the tos is fun once you get the hang of it but anyway all right good night everyone see you on saturday see bye you bro. later guys bye